Hello there, ladies, gentlemen and unicorns. Welcome to a different stream this time, uh, assuming this is working. Let me just quickly check uh, what's going on there on YouTube. Yes, yes, it's working and I'm hearing myself now <laughs> having some feedback there. Okay, but yeah, this is working great. I can hear myself, which is good. I hope you can hear me. I tried to up the volume there on the stream of my microphone because it's a new microphone. So I hope uh, I will talk now with a little less noise in the background. So what's this stream today uh, going to be? Well, uh, it's a, a little bit different because I'm not playing any games. Uh, this one will be just me working on my Ludum Dare 42 documentary. So today's schedule is first we'll be editing a photo in Photoshop. Uh, it's, it's a picture that I need as a prop to be featured in this big uh, film noir bit uh, that I'm producing. So it's, it's, it shows up twice in close-ups. So it really needs uh, to look like it was taken in 1946 around this time. So it's going to be a black and white photograph, which we'll be editing in Photoshop. And once this is done, because I don't think this will take a lot of time, we will uh, be doing some editing on the actual Ludum Dara 42 documentary. I already got the intro, but I had a very busy uh, a week and also the week before. But uh, yeah, this week uh, I finally got got some <laughs> get a breather and can yeah j just keep on working on the documentaries. Okay, so um, I already took the photos. Now let's just get it here from my SD card. Oops into the computer and then we will have a look. Yeah, the photo is about a big uh, shiny gem that's central to the piece, to the Ludum Dare, uh, what am I saying, to the film noir piece. Um, that's pretty much the MacGuffin our main character is after. So I hope you can see enough uh, because I'm streaming in HD resolution, but I, my monitor is set to 4K in which I'm working on. But if, it, if there's anything important, I will zoom in. But uh, yeah, probably you can't read all the text labels here, but this is not, not too important. So I got a bunch of photos taken. Those are the CR2 uh, files there. As you can see, it's just, just my hand holding this big shiny gem. And yeah, let's let's take them to Photoshop. And well, first, you know what? Let's first copy them locally there on my desktop where all the, all the stuff goes, right? DNGs, let's call it DNGs. A DNGs is the negative, the digital uh, negative format. I think it's pretty open. It's by Adobe and the CR2, all, the raw camera files from my Canon camera. So it's usually it's good practice to, to convert them to DNGs uh, before doing anything, or at least if you want to store them. But right now I think, I think I'm good because uh, since I'll be just picking one photo, I don't think I will have to keep them all. So let's open them. Could not open your request because it's not the right kind of document. What are you telling me Photoshop? Can we just open them there with camera raw or something? Where this camera raw? Yes, there we go. Camera raw pops up. Cool. So now we can process our images. This is why I prefer to shoot uh, all my photos in raw in the camera's raw format, because now I can do a lot of stuff here in post-production in the camera raw format. So if you're just shooting JPEG images, this is completely fine. But since I'm doing a lot of post-production, uh, yeah, this is why I always shoot in raw. As you can see, the or probably not see <laughs> because the text is so small. Um, yeah, those those files are like uh, 25 megabytes per frame or per, per photograph. So uh, yeah, now we got all the images here and I'm trying to select now the one that works best in black and white. And this is usually just a question of silhouettes. Uh, I, you're pr probably very familiar with silhouettes, especially also in games, just to make a character or just anything readable or legible uh, uh, against the background. And since this is, has to work in black and white, I really want something that the, the foreground stands out uh, from the background. So I think I will be going with this one or also this one has this night glare in there. 
By the way, always, if you're working with some kind of gems or, or gemstones or diamonds, always light them from behind. As you can see here, uh, probably not uh, this much, but they're in the framing that it's it's pretty uh, uh, straight on. So it's it's quite just, just opposite of the camera. This is where I put the light so that it gets refracted very nicely in the in the gem. I think this one works kind of well there, but on the other hand, <laughs> on the other hand, pun intended, my hand there looks a little bit chunky. I don't know, but I really like like how, how the gem looks there. But this is also nice, but my pinky is cut off here, which is not as nice. So I think this one here should be should be the best picture to take. So before continuing, let's have a look at the chat because a lot of lovely people are already there in the chat. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Javon Hickman, hi, Frank Jewartz, Antonio uh, Kantarin, Kantarin, Jerzy Hizek and Eric Guerin. So hello everyone who just wrote in the chat. I wish you a good evening or whatever time of day it is on your end. So let's uh, start with yeah editing this photo here. So the first thing I do, because I, uh, uh, this is important when we are here still in the camera raw, I got all the definition that is there in the image. If you just shoot a JPEG, you, you're you limited to uh, pretty much uh, 256 values per channel. But my camera shoots, I think, in 12-bit. So this is a lot of more color information and stuff. So yeah, I, I do this for a living, this, this whole uh, color uh, uh, thing. So yeah, I, I really, really want the best quality I can get out of it. So um, yeah, I'm just doing here some, some preliminary white balance. In the end, it's going to be black and white, but I really want to work now with something that looks quite nice there in color already. So I'm turning down now here the highlights a little bit so that here the back of my hand is still, still has some definition. I don't want to clip anything apart from those harsh highlights, but for now I think this should work. Usually what, what gives all those uh, photos a little bit of pizzazz is uh, turning up the clarity here just to make it a little bit more contrasty. So I think I will go with that. And uh, one last thing here uh, is to open the image uh, as 16 bits per channel because otherwise you would cut off all those nice uh, yeah, color data that still is preserved in, in the uh, in the raw image. So let's open it and here she asks what's the plan and the plan for today is just to edit this little photo here which I will use as a prop in my upcoming Ludum Dare bit in the Film Noir bit and then uh, I'm going to do some editing on the actual documentary. So because I don't think this will take us as long. So as for the photograph, yeah, let's <laughs> let's do some research because I don't know actually what uh, uh, the, 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 the format actually or the dimensions of old uh, photographs actually were. Is, is, is it five by four inches? Well, I don't know. So let's just Google 1940s photograph print format. And yeah, I, I just love my research. So photo print drawing. Uh, there we go. Timeline of photography, Wikipedia, large format. Yeah, those those are the negative sizes, but I'm looking at the print sizes. Real photo postcard. The history of printing during the 20th century. I don't think, yeah, maybe, maybe we should be looking <laughs> uh, differently uh, at print format. Maybe, maybe this is it. Evolution of print ads. Well, this is not, not good. Oh, this looks nice. 35 millimeter black and white print size, 1920s to 1940s. Oh, man, the internet is great. You get pretty much anything that, that you need. So let's scale this up that you can also read it. And I'm not consenting to any cookies, so I just keep this message here. Does anyone know what the standard normal black and white print produced was in the 20s and 40s? This is a great question. I don't know how helpful I can be with this, but assuming you're referring to drugstore processing, um, um, Jumbo prints seem to recall four by six only showed up in perhaps the early 80s. Before that, 3.5 times five was the norm. This is great. Let's see what anyone else said. The flat of prints are good. So we are looking at 3.5 times 5.5 inches. This is great. I love my research. So this is the size that we're going to work with. So I make a new document now and give it the appropriate uh, dimensions. So what did we say? It's 3.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5
3.5 by 5.5 inches and crank up the resolution to 600 pixels per inch and say it's 16 bit. I hope you can read this really. So um, I don't think I will use it as portrait, but as landscape mode, switch the background color there to white and have a look at the chat again. Do you have a daily job as a colorist or are you a freelancer? Well, actually it's both. I work part-time, uh, I'm employed part-time and the other half of, of the month I work freelance for anything or anyone who requires my services. And if there's still time, and usually there's plenty, you know, freelancing, um, I will work, uh, I keep working on, on stuff like this here. Cool, so let's uh, just copy the whole thing and paste it here. Why am I copying and pasting? Because now I can say layer and convert it to a smart object. This lets me resize the whole thing. And if I want to change it in the end, by upscaling it again, it's not, uh, it, it retains uh, essentially all the information the image still has. So if I scale it down at to say 10% and then think, yeah, it's too small, I want to scale it up again. It, yeah, it's pretty much an embedded uh, picture there. So this is why uh, I like this very much to use smart objects because yeah, then I can just scale things up and down and try try stuff out before doing before committing essentially so yeah i'm not too happy now with the framing here <laughs> actually because uh, uh it would have looked a little bit better maybe maybe i need to scale it up again you see this is this is why i'm i'm just yeah using smart objects so i can really scale around and, and see how things work so now this would be great in frame but now my hand if if we have a look uh, here at the small navigator i always have this navigator open on the my other screen so that i can look at my images at a small size because at a small size you can see at a glance if something looks odd and this looks looks like some alien finger here it doesn't look too nicely so yeah this won't work you know what um let's let's go for a square format of yeah 3.5 times 3.5 let's crop the image here and see if this would improve our framing that my fingers aren't cut off as much but it's still pretty clear what what the hand is holding because like i said this this gem there is the whole centerpiece of the story or at least well it's the MacGuffin. Uh, the the object everyone is after but actually the story is not about this object it's more like what people are willing uh, to uh, do to get this so yeah I think like this should be all right so uh, what also is usually what I've learned when I was in photography class is it's important that you always have a nicely uh, yeah a nicely uh, symmetrical white a frame around the image which I think I will also have here so let's uh, stroke here by let's say 20 pixels inside is 20 pixels enough yeah not not really enough uh, I learned that it should be half a centimeter um, so let's go with 40 pixels to make it really pronounced that there's a white frame around it this is good of course we still have here on the upper frame here, uh, you probably can't see my mouse pointer, I, I, I presume. So you know what, let, let, let's change the size of my mouse pointer here if I can somehow manage to do this quickly. Um, where do we have it? Personalize themes, is it under themes? Oh my God, I hate those Windows 10 menus, probably because I still come from <laughs> Windows 3.11. Okay, so also the fun fact is about those Windows 10 menus. You, you, you click something and then this ages old dialog pops up, which is literally unchanged since Windows 95. So let's go with Windows default, extra large, and make the uh, system scheme large, extra large. I, I want to make my mouse pointer black. Maybe you can see this, but no, you know what? Let's, let's keep the white one. Okay, uh, yeah. 
damn it <laughs> i forgot since we're in photoshop of course it defaults to the to the photoshop sized cursors so yeah anyway i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> okay let's 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 continue working on this so i like i said i want this to work well in black and white and yeah i'm, I'm just still nudging this around so maybe this one should look good and just to know that uh, what my background will look like i just change here now the color of course it doesn't look too good now if i zoom in of course you can see there's this transition from photo to just the solid but i think yeah just just now to judge the the whole framing of the picture i think we should be good like this okay so now let's turn this black and white the uh, simple way or the straightforward way way of doing this would be just yeah turn down saturation to zero and we're done. But like I said, I'm a colorist and even black and white involves colors. Uh, so this is not what we're going to do. I will use now some adjustment layers. Let's bring up this panel here. And there's a nice adjustment layer that's called, where is it, black and white. And bring also up the properties here. Man, yeah, I hope you really can see this on, 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 on your stream. I'm, I'm really afraid that it's a little bit too small. So, but what this does is here you can, it, it's like having colored filters across it. So this means just anything that's red in the image, I can control uh, how it translates uh, to black and white. So anything that's red, I want very dark and anything that's yellow, I want very bright. You can see how this affects the image. So essentially my trick is if you want a black and white photograph, shoot in color and do something yeah really well exposed and as you can see here now i can really play play uh, with how this will look in black and white by just yeah just uh, changing now the levels here on the individual colors essentially it's like using colored filters when you're shooting black and white it's pretty much the same thing but i'm not getting into this <laughs> here now because this is a topic uh, uh, of by by itself but but trust me, colored filters and black and white photography, there's a lot you can do. Also, I really like, because I was uh, backlighting this whole thing here, that uh, you can really see this this fringe there, this, this yeah, what's it called? Uh, border li lighting, so, so, something like this, but not, uh, yeah, light, light fringes. I call them light fringes, which is nice. So again, let's have a look there at the navigator. They're in small. It looks like it's working but I'm not entirely convinced. So I add another adjustment layer on top and just play there with the levels just to make it really strong. And yeah, so far I'm, I like how it looks. Now let's, let's commit to this and take care there of the background. Uh, I don't like now here this, this digital noise that we have here in the image. Of course, it won't uh, uh, be in print because when I'm printing this, this will be of course with my uh, inkjet printer. But for now, uh, I want to really to get rid of all the noise there. So uh, yeah, let's, let's do a neat image reduce noise. Neat image is one of my favorite plugins. Let's bring it up here. Uh, essentially, it works like this. You just select a portion where there's only noise in there. You hit auto profile and then we can preview how well it does things. I hope you can see it here. I'm, I'm zooming in now when I'm holding down, I can see how it looked before. And this is, it's just magic. There's also a plugin for Premiere and After Effects that really gets rid of all the noise. It's just, yeah, it's just magic. Uh, so let's have a look at the uh, chat again. Small, but I can make everything out. This is great. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Um, Ktos Nietznani says hello, and I'm sorry for mispronouncing your name. And Yoshi Hesek says, I'm watching on my phone in portrait mode <laughs> with visible chat. So yeah, it's a bit small there. Okay, uh, I will try to zoom in uh, when as anything that's, that's very important. But thanks for watching on, on your phone. This must not be too worry. <laughs> too comfortable. Okay, uh, like I said, now I'm not happy here with this with this uh, transition here between the background of the photograph and the just just the colored solid that I made there. So to get rid of this, I just select it here with a little bit of room around it. Um, I'm just switching now here to selection mode so that you can see anything that's red is selected. And now I say just, uh, are we on the right layer? Yes, we are. Of course, yeah, uh, you know what I, I said, I want to commit to this. And, but since it's a smart object, I can't 
draw on it essentially. So what I'm going to do is we'll just uh, reduce this to a regular object, which means yeah, no more scaling. Otherwise we would be ruining uh, uh, the, the, the quality of it. But this is okay because I am pretty, pretty happy with how it looks already. So let's uh, right click and say fill. And I'm fill as well, pun intended. So, and I will say content aware, which is great because this just lets the Photoshop algorithm decide what should be uh, put in place there. And it tries to recreate some of my finger there. This is not too good. So I'll just say it again, content aware fill. And this is also myself. I'm the content aware fill <laughs> with pH and looks looks very nice same thing here but this shouldn't be too much of a problem because there is no hand uh, too closely uh, there that it tries to recreate it good so we've taken care of this let's have a look at it in thumbnail mode and i'm kind of happy with what it looks like what it's look what it looks like, Jesus, my English today. <laughs> but there are just, of course, always some minor things that I want to address. One thing is that we have here this little splotch there, this here in the middle, I will try to highlight this. This one here uh, is, I think it's just a lens flare from, from, uh, uh, yeah, from the refraction there in the gem. So let's just fill it again and gotten rid of it also. And always uh, I want to give it a little bit more uh, focus. And this is the thing that we've colorists and especially uh, photographers have been doing for literally hundreds of years, especially photographers. It's, it's uh, having this vignetting effect, which means just, yeah, that the edges get darkened and the more you come to the center of the frame, the lighter uh, the image gets. So for this, I just make a new gradient. Let's make it just black. It's a radial gradient. So uh, I draw this on a new layer and no, I want it the other way around. Let's reverse this, undo and something like this. Of course, now this is too strong. So let's uh, undo it. And you know what? I will use a gradient from white to black. Uh, other way around. Now it's from white to uh, transparent because uh, that way, no, <laughs> this was wrong because that way I can uh, hit reverse again because that way to finish my sentence, I can control it with levels. So I'm going to set its blending mode from normal to multiply. Where is it? There it is. No, this was color burn. <laughs> this was too strong. This is multiply. And now if I'm um, using curves or levels only on this vignette there, I can change it in its intensity. This is a bit too strong, but somewhere along those lines should give the image some more yeah, focus on the gem. Of course, now I'm also vignetting there my white frame. So let's pull the frame up there in the layers and there we go. One last thing is that, uh, as you can see here in the small preview, everything has, especially the hand, is pretty nicely separated from the background. Only the gem looks like in, in the small frame here, like there's a segment missing or that it has some holes, which is, like as I said, I'm, I'm a perfectionist and I don't like it if, if I can help it to, 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 have, uh, to keep things like this. So what I'm doing now is very crudely, because this is going to be a small photograph that's even uh, filmed off, because I'm, I'm not using it as is, as in the di digital form, but I will print it out and film it in a close up. And this is how it will go in the in the bit. So it's okay if I'm if I do this, this cut out here, not too, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, too uh, detailed. So I just copy it and paste it there so that I only have here the gem on its own layer. And what I'm doing now is just trying to uh, always have an eye here on my navigator. Let's make it a little bit smaller still, but so I can see how it looks when it's, it's small. So like this looks almost like a diamond, but I kind of like it actually. But what we could do is just have those fringe lights here. Just use, uh, yeah, 
pretty much uh, the borders that it reads well against the gray background. And oops, how do I do this? Of course, with a layer mask, which means I'm just painting over the image and anything that's black in the layer mask uh, gets, yeah, is, is, gets transparent and anything that's white will, will stay. So if I'm just painting over here like this, you can see uh, I'm just revealing what's underneath this layer. So and I'm painting now like so. Maybe give back some of the edges. I'm, I'm painting here now with my Wacom tablet. So maybe like this. Of course, uh, you always uh, want to match uh, uh, the structure of the object you're painting. Right now I'm using a very soft brush and usually this works fine, but uh, not with something like crystals or, or this one essentially. So let's switch it on and off and see, yeah, I like it how, how it, it pronounces there the shape. You know what? I will drop on another adjustment layer. Just just give it give it a try there. Oh, not not anything, just just the layer underneath. And, and see how much I can crank it up before it looks artificial again. Huh. Yeah, it already looks <laughs> artificial. Um, okay, different approach. Uh, I like how it looks on the on the left side, but I don't like how it looks on the right side. It's a little bit yeah, too soft and doesn't look correct. And I think I didn't have any problems of how it read against the background there just to keep its silhouette. So I will just uh, cut out, no like so there's still a small fringe there from from my selection there so this is just what I did I just I cut out uh, the right portion because the left portion is what what I want to read against the background well so um, Hello everyone who's just new <laughs> to the stream uh, and asking themselves what the hell is happening here? This doesn't look, it has to uh, to do anything with making games. Uh, just to reiterate, I'm editing now a photo I will need for my upcoming Ludum Dara 42 documentary. And once this is done, because I will need it as a prop and I'm almost there, um, then we will uh, go to editing the Ludum Dara 42 documentary, which I think should be quite all right. So uh, to finish things off here, I will try just now to follow here uh, the segments and faces there on the gem, like so. I don't think you can see it quite well, but I will switch now once I'm done here. The red one is now, uh, the red portion is now what I've selected and I will cut this out also from the layer mask that it looks a little bit sharper that it looks like like there's just some white light that's being reflected off of the edges of this uh, yeah diamond shape. So um, I don't quite like this jagged edge here, but let's again, let's have a look here in the smaller portion of the frame, how it reads. Yeah, of course it's, it looks like it's look much, it looks much better now. Cool, I'm almost happy with it. I, th I still think that this little step there is a bit too much. So I will just smoothen it out a little bit like so. Yeah, still still looks good. And one last thing is uh, <laughs> that I want uh, uh, to have this uh, part here, this middle, this center, just to glow even a little bit more. So I start a new layer, take a very soft brush, make a very, give it a very big size and the opacity of my drawing brush, I put it down to like 10%. Make sure that I have white selected and just dot, make a small dot here and there and just really give it, give it this big shine and see if, if that improves things or it just makes the whole image look a little bit muddy. And yeah, it, it, you know what? It kind of looks a bit muddy. You know what? I will turn it down a bit like so and review my final photo like this if there's anything that looks strange or odd like I said it always comes down to details and now here I don't know if you can see it, this those two hairs there they have a reflection here in the light and I don't like this so let's just uh, yeah just stamp them out oh I'm on the wrong wrong layer again of course so let's do this and thank you Photoshop and smart stamp brush Excellent. So yeah, this is how it looked before. And now this is the finished black and white version. Well, it's almost finished. 
almost finished because you know what it's too clean uh you you might recall i just before said yeah it's a little bit too dirty let's let's get rid of the noise but now i want uh, some some kind of film grain that it looks like it was taken like i said in 1940s with the camera and the film stock there and the film stock always had some some grain or some noise Luckily, I have a huge selection <laughs> of grain and noise because this is also what I need for my job as a colorist uh, to give images. This, this uh, some some clients want that their images appear like yeah they were taken in the 70s or 80s and have this grain. But of course, you don't want this this uh, yeah colorful noise. You know those red and blue dots you get from from digital images. So usually, my process is to get rid of all the digital noise and then add fake noise on top of it. That looks like the grain of a film so i'm here in my dropbox and where do i have it film stock and optical there we go digital noise dirt and scratches film grain and there we even got some film grain with p h i l m uh, i don't know you can read it but take my word for it i got i got some custom made film grain there okay it's an xr file so i think we should be fine and this is what this fake grain uh, looks like so i since this is a 32-bit image, I need to get it down to 11 bits per pixel. So let's just merge it, and we can see here HDR toning. So this is this is really it's, it's not quite important what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm just trying to get it into the right color space, because yeah, my background is also in visual effects. So yeah, this was maybe a little bit too dark, but since yeah, it's since it has so many bits, <laughs> there's still enough definition there. Good, so let's just copy and layer it on top. And you know what? I'm not happy with how cloudy this looks. It, it looks okay, but I think, you know what? I think it's, it's quite okay if I reverse this now here because I think I turned down now uh, when I converted it from 32 bits per pixels to 16 bits per pixel so that I could just uh, work with it here. Uh, merge. I think I, I just pulled down now here the gamma too much. So it's just should just be a little. Oh, it was even it was too much still. <laughs> okay, you know what? Uh, screw this. I'm just using here the levels to bring it back up where it should be and copy the whole thing and paste it on top of everything. But underneath, of course, the white frame because you wouldn't have a uh, grain on the frame. No. Like so. So I'm just scaling this up since it's noise anyway. It's, it's, it's okay if it's a little bit blurry, but I will still, you know what, I will sharpen the noise now. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is what I do make images pretty and then mess them up again. Okay, so uh, important if you do some noise overlay, make sure that uh, the median point of your noise is right there in the dead center. It's at 128 uh, uh, value. As you know, in eight bits per pixels, it's from zero to 255 and you want the medium point at, yeah, like I said, straight in the middle and then you can use the blending mode of overlay which looks like this so anything that's uh, darker in the source images will get dark and anything that's brighter will get brighter and since this is a noise yeah it will just get noisier so i think i'm quite happy with how it looks now maybe of course you would even blur what's underneath because right now it's it's very apparent that the grain is much of a much lower resolution than what's here on the hand but i think when i will print it out it will of course lose some some uh yeah definition and and uh quality anyway so i think i think we can call this one here finished so let's save it and save it on the desktop and call it photo for noir bit version one because even if you're pretty sure it's final <laughs> sometimes it's not and then you end up with copy of final 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 greenlit very final extremely final two good okay so um yeah like like i said we're finished now here uh, with the photograph i'm pretty happy with how it turned out like I said, if it works in very small, when you look at it uh, from, from very far away and it still works and you know what's important in the frame, um, then you've done a good job. 
Okay, so we don't need to save all the other images there. And yeah, we got it here on the desktop. Cool. Um, let's have a look at the chat again. Über perfectioniert wie immer. Yeah, I'm, I'm overly perfectionist. I can't help it. <laughs> so you should write something like editing Ludum Da documentary into the stream title. Oh, yes, of course. Of course, this is a good idea. Edit video, fill streams. How can I do this? You know what? Let's let's move the chat over here. Oh my God, this is more film streams, editing Ludum Dare documentary. Safe. This is a very good suggestion. Thank you. So I think it should update now, and this message is held for review. Yes, because there was a link and yeah, of course, I made a Scully open source. You can get it at pixelprophecy.com slash stuff. And then you just head over to downloads and tools, I think it is, and or sources and there is Scully. So it's open source. And if any one of you want to look at the source code, uh, by the way, if you've studied uh, computer sciences or informatics as it's called here, uh, you will get a good laugh out of it or perhaps you will just face palm yourself uh, a concussion <laughs> because it's horrible code. I think uh, I, I put everything in just one huge class and there's just one other class and this was the Coray. Um, just just uh, to tell you, uh, th this blinking lower bar here, this is actually a, a drawn uh, rectangle here. And a lot of my code went in just to get the position of the currently highlighted character in the in the in the frame and draw this uh, uh yeah this curry here it, it's it's crazy you you, you don't want to, to take a look at it actually uh, I, I tried to clean it up but i opened the source code and i i think i did this when was it oh my god even the help dialogue if you scale it up too much is completely whack i'm so sorry yeah i i don't think i have a copyright message there even <laughs> because it's it's horrible yeah, you, you don't want really to take a look at my source code because like I said, I tried it and it was so long that I've, I think I've written this in, in one week where I started teaching myself C sharp with Stack Overflow and, <laughs> and Wikipedia. So yeah, it, it's, it's, it's horrible code. In short, it's horrible code and I don't know myself my way around it any longer. So this is why I made it open source because <laughs> You make something open source when you want other people to clean up your code, hopefully, and uh, don't ask a thing for it. Cheers. So I will have a sip now of my water. And then we will do some editing on the current state of the Ludum Dara 42 documentary. There we go. Like I said, I'm sorry that it's everything is in 4K and the stream is in HD, but I really need the 4K resolution here because uh, especially in, in, in Premiere when you're doing some editing stuff, uh, yeah, it's, it's just uh, things get crowded easily. I mean, even on one screen, since I'm working now with two screen, uh, no, three screens, uh, my, my central screen is in 4K and two satellite screens on left and right are each uh, HD. So this is barely enough for me. Uh, yeah, I've... I don't know how I did things back then with just one monitor in, uh, what was it, uh, 1048 by 768 or something. Uh, crazy. It was super VGA resolution and it was just amazing back then. But yeah, I I'm around quite quite a lot. Okay, so um, the things that I have problems with are audio. I tried this before and I couldn't get it to work that I have some audio here from my microphone as well as the audio in the stream of uh, Premiere. The thing is because I'm editing this uh, uh, on my uh, main machine but the stream is happening from my notebook because uh, my my computer is so crappy that sometimes it just messes up the, the sound output and it yeah it's just glitchy and I don't know that it's glitchy and then I have to unplug the microphone, replug it again and just hope that it works once. So this is why I'm, I'm doing all the streaming on a different platform. But of course, what I didn't get to work is um, that I get a output for myself so that I can hear what I'm editing and have an output of, of the sound in the stream. So what we're doing now is I'm just turning up the volume and I hope you can pick up what's going on uh, through my microphone here. And I will try just to be very silent and make no mouth noises uh, while I'm playing here. So this is what I got so far on the new documentary. So are you ready? 
Then, here we go. Ludumdare 42 looked to me to be no different than any other Ludumdare game jam. Taking time off work, trying to get inspired before the jam, coffee, hating the theme, and trying to make something from nothing. In short, everything began like so often before, but things have a nasty habit of turning on you. This is the Ludumdare 42 post mortem. Yay! <laughs> and uh, my process is usually this, is that I'm of course I'm writing the script or I'm taking notes uh, while uh, the, the just the, the whole uh, jam is happening and then I'll take a break from it so that I, I yeah I get uh, the necessary distance uh, to it because I tried uh, sometimes uh, early I tried to just start writing the script right after the jam and the problem is uh, I you, you you're not really really focused on on what's important or what you take away from the jam and i i think in the first version it was the cellar or even even pressure run i think i wrote oh, i don't know four or five pages where i was just very occupied with uh, so uh, finding a solution for a memory leak or, or i think something like this and it i just went on and on and on and once i read it back uh, while i was doing the the voiceover it didn't work it was just boring uh, really and i on top of that i don't know if i have enough uh, footage uh, or uh, moving images just to lay on top of, of of three minutes just talking about one data structure in in the end it was just just a stupid brain fart code so yeah this is why i uh, just take notes a lot of notes during the jam then take a break from it and come back after a couple of weeks and then write uh, the whole script. And once the script is done and revised, uh, usually it takes me like four or five revisions when I just keep reading the script and trying to, to condense things or flesh out where some things are unclear. And once this is done, I record the voiceover. And this is, let's zoom out now here, the whole voiceover. This is the green bar down below. This is a good indicator of how long the whole thing will be in the end. So this right here, we are at uh, 20 minutes and 36 seconds. But of course, uh, this is just talking uh, uh, without a lot of breaks. And since, of course, there will also the Ludum Dare, uh, Ludum Dare bit, <laughs> I meant uh, the Film Noir bit in between, which is around 15 to 17 minutes, something around this. So I, we're looking again at a 40 minutes uh, documentary, I think it will be in the end. And then there's of course another bit. Yeah, yeah, I think 40 minutes, 45 minutes, which is massive. The longest I've done so far was Headroom and this was also 45 minutes and it almost broke me because it was just so much. <laughs> But I'm, but I'm very uh, much looking forward to, to this one. Is uh, really, I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time now uh, preparing for this film noir bit. And like I said, I got all the props ready now that I've even made uh, <laughs> the photograph now. And I think I will start uh, shooting some of the scenes uh, this week because uh, finally I got some time to do this. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the chat before I continue. Um, yeah, I got... 35 seconds already, which is almost done. This is correct. Yeah. <laughs> probably one hour work per video second. Yeah, probably. I, I still haven't timed it, but yeah, usually it's it's a lot of work because when you start editing and then you just, it's, it's like, yeah, with any kind of editing, even with game dev, you just iterate and iterate and, and look at it again and again, take some time off, have some someone else look over it, and then you really, really try to file off any edges that aren't as, as interesting or are as important uh, as you thought uh, in the first place. So where is the jet? Where is the jet? There it is. There it is. Maybe Maybe put it on the other screen again that I can read it. Um, Benjamin Edward writes, come see me spend 45 minutes trying to find my measuring spoon. <laughs> you don't want to mix this. I've been doing controller setup on my game for a month now. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, sounds great, Phil. Um, I'm looking forward to watching it. Yes, yeah, so am I. So am I. And as you can see right now, this is how it works. I have my, uh, the voiceover down there and for the intro. Okay, let's let's turn down the volume now that I, I can hear myself talk and think. So right now it's the, the biggest part is trying to find the right pictures to go with the voiceover. And usually when I'm writing this, I have a look at all the footage. I, I, I 
yeah just just make sure that i'm not mentioning any anything that i don't have footage of but this rally works out because something is very important you realize once you write the script that it's actually an important part but you don't have uh, moving images of this like if you recall my headroom documentary this was the first time that I collaborated uh, on a Ludum Da Jam and I really uh, wanted to show yeah, how, how it came about because I was, li like the documentary states, uh, with my friend Max in the cafe and then it, it just came up and I said, sure, let, let, let's, let's do this. But of course, in the moment, you don't have a camera ready and you can't quite reenact it. And this is why I thought, yeah, I will do this in RPG Maker. So it, it kind of fits the theme. And, and just roll with it. And this is a blessing and a curse. <laughs> a blessing because, yeah, you finally are able to, to find illustrations to points you don't have any footage of. The curse, of course, is that it's a lot of work. And usually, uh, especially as for me, I don't know in the first place when I'm writing this, how I will illustrate this. Because once you start having this producer brain, uh, when, when, when you want to be creative in, in writing, it, it really, it really <laughs> doesn't work because then you're constantly thinking about man how am, am i going to do this oh this looks to be uh, already to be a bit too dif difficult yeah let, let's just let's just not do it and in the end you just end up with a bland script and all the images you will have are just you sitting in front of the computer because those are the easiest to make so i don't want to go that route i really want to uh, look at each stage individually and then just look at it again and try to figure out how how to do things okay um fi finally let's let's do some editing <laughs> um a lot of uh, a lot of editing for me is just uh yeah trying trying stuff out and having this this uh, stand in template here what what i find great by the way uh, working now with adobe products is that you have this synced library of of anything of any graphics you can use uh, all across your adobe products you you, uh, you have and you can also store some some things or some yeah some clips or graphics just for use for later and it's just as easy as drag and drop and this one here this standing graphic here is the one that i use the most because uh yeah you can really see the, the big uh, red frame really tells you that there's something missing so uh yeah we've seen the intro so far and of course the intro graphic is just standing by the way i'm not too happy with how it looks like because there are like one two three different fonts but i don't know what font uh, mike kasperzak used for the ludum dare logo and i just picked i think it was the bauhaus font which looks kind of similar but of course yeah it's, it's a little bit too uh, too gaudy in a way so yeah I'm, I'm not sure if if this will this will stay so this was the intro so how do we continue after the intro what is there i can see that i already put put some stuff down here on uh on the video lanes but yeah it's just let's yeah let, 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 let's have a look for ourselves and see how how bad things are the days and weeks before had been exhausting as i had worked my butt off to free the weekend and two days to recover of any other concerns you see this is another one of those instances yeah how do i illustrate that uh, the weeks and months before the jam i'd worked my butt off to free enough time for it for now let's just keep this there as a stand-in <laughs> and worry about it later but yeah this is a whole lot that we really can't really find uh, uh, uh easily how to illustrate this maybe it's a some some shots of a calendar or something but yeah this is a little bit contrived to be frank yeah still don't know how to do this um by the way i of course i want to keep it in tones with video games so maybe i will make it as a graphic novel or something just yeah like i said just something uh that 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 cries video games uh, but it's also illustrative of my point and ideally not too much uh, work but who am i kidding if it's a lot of work but still it would be great i just i just go for it okay so what's next at least there we got we got some some images and i will mute now the audio because this is just audio of me <laughs> uh, on the scene just probably sitting down on the afternoon of the jam day i wanted to chill in one of my favorite cafes but i was having a bad time I wanted to chill in one of my favorite cafes, but I was having a bad time. Yeah, this doesn't really work what I have here. Drobbing headaches and feeling tired 
despite the gallons of coffee or maybe because of it okay so there we have coffee which i would have uh, very much like to have a picture of of the coffee but at the same time i was feeling bad and having headaches again the bad thing is that uh, yeah sometimes especially before the jam all the stress and yeah really worrying <laughs> if if you if if everything should should work out i usually have a headache and i can't uh, possibly use another shot of me downing an aspirin <laughs> so yeah maybe maybe i find another way of of yeah just just making this work now where the hell did i put my graphics templates that i just had before oh of course it's there on the browse of course so again this is a stand-in i'm not happy with uh, the images i have here of myself sitting sitting down okay what's next in the audio the writing had been on the wall and i had decided to ignore it the writing had been on the wall and i decided to ignore it of course that would be nice to have some kind of writing on the wall and i think what i will be going for is my whiteboard here which I always put down uh, the, the current Ludendara theme. Just just uh, to, to illustrate the point, the writing had been on the wall. So let's have a look here at my huge structure of, of uh, source files. Let's pop this out here in a new panel, perhaps. Let's try this. And undock panel. So let's, that, that you can see what the hell is actually <laughs> going on. So this here is my source panel, live action. There we go. And let's make this bigger. And yeah, I'm, I'm just dividing up when I'm shooting by day. So we have here day 2B, day 1A. So let's start with day 1A. Why the hell is this always opening in the wrong bin here? I don't like this. So this is what I have for day a. So I don't, apparently for, for Ludendorff 42, I didn't put it on the whiteboard. So there is no writing on the wall, but I put it down here on, <laughs> on my, uh, yeah, college pad. Oh, nice, nice. This is where I was eating some, some candy. Ah, oh, okay, damn it. Yeah. You know what? Um, let's, uh, let's try if I can find something else that should work or hmm. yeah I'm just looking through uh, anything that's happened here on another day so maybe I can use a, a, a shot that I have of another day that I could put in there mm. but writing is on the wall no no I don't think that I will have some kind of graffiti maybe no yeah again let, let's continue so what's what's the next uh, that's happening here in the voiceover? This is I, I, I actually I thought this would be going better, and I have more to show you of <laughs> of how I edit things. So apologies. That time the jam would start three hours earlier than usual, an experiment especially us European jammers benefited from. Unless your sleeping cycle is as messed up as mine. Okay, so this is good. We got the clock because it started a couple of hours earlier. This is good. Two minutes to midnight or five minutes. This is great. What I don't know how to illustrate is the following sentence. An experiment especially us European jammers benefited from. An experiment us uh, European jammers benefited from unless your sleeping cycle is as messed up as mine. Okay, sleeping cycle is as messed up as mine. Where do we have, do I have any kind of images when I'm in bed? I don't think so, because usually those, I, I can't shoot myself, <laughs> shoot myself when I'm in bed. This sounds uh, uh, silly, but yeah, you know what I mean? I, I, I Usually I, I don't feel myself, of course, going to sleep because yeah, this, I, I value some of my privacy at least. So those are all pickup shots that I shoot after the Ludum Nare, uh, after the event has happened. But I don't think I have shot any kind of pickups of this right now. Maybe I can use some kind of those establishing shots of, of night. Okay, I zoomed there in. I don't know what I wanted to focus on. Uh, but at least we have some night time here and some more night time here. Oh, I know what I did. I zoomed in so that I can make sure that everything is in focus. So you zoom in, uh, pull the focus and then you zoom out and and hope that the focus stays. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So this is another instance where I need to put down a stand in there. As Europeans jammers benefited from, 
maybe I can find a map of Europe or something, or just a screenshot of, of the announcement uh, Mike made. Uh, probably this is uh, uh, what, what this is going to be. So let's, let's have a look at it again. Urban usual. An experiment especially us European jammers benefited from. So experiment, let's, let's uh, put it in here, what I have in mind. Screenshot of announcement graphics or yeah it's it's going to be graphics so this is my way of of yeah just just putting down notes on what things i want to do so that i can just keep continuing working in, on the edit unless your sleeping cycle is as messed up as mine okay messed up sleeping cycle um how do you uh, put this into pictures that you have a messed up sleeping cycle um, maybe uh, uh, me sleeping at four in the afternoon or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I don't know yet, so I just keep it empty for now. But yeah, you you can you can see how my process is is going. Uh, I'm just really sentence by sentence trying to find the best uh, uh, pictures to go with the words, just to illustrate what's what's going on. I'm I'm not too happy overall with my editing because sometimes you watch uh, someone else's story and there's a lot more uh, yeah just breathing room for the images where it's just a couple of seconds where nobody's talking and it's just music and stuff so i really want to start working this into my uh, uh, documentaries because right now it's it's like this right it's a it's a wall of text that's sometimes broken up by uh, yeah just some more images that i can that can stand on their own but usually it's just just some guy wisecracking for <laughs> half an hour or like in the case of this stream here a guy wisecracking for over one hour uh, talking of wisecracking uh, let's uh, uh, have a look at the chat and wisecrack on what I'm, I'm doing there just gonna write english here now it's easier for you oh yeah thank you uh, uh, when i'm switching between german and english it, it messes up my brains <laughs> did, did you consider to partner with someone for a documentary tr to produce uh yes and no yes for one thing it would be easier to have someone else uh, uh, operate the cameras and stuff because at the end of the day i also want to make a game <laughs> end of end of movie so yeah those things sometimes have to take the back seat uh, one sometimes the other so but the, the problem is that i really don't have anyone uh, close here at least where i'm living right now uh, or any friends close by that that could help me out which is a shame because i think it would be a lot of fun but at the same time uh, sometimes it's, it's cool when i just have this wild idea and got all the camera stuff and anything all the lights there and i can really uh, do something on a whim when it's four in the morning <laughs> Um, that's why I'm never able to finish bigger games myself. I'm just getting stuck at the small pieces because I think it's not perfect. Ah, oh, yeah, this is this is really hard for me, and the, this is one of the biggest problems I think I have with these documentaries because now that I got uh, all, all you great guys that are just just yeah watching and and, and commenting and everything, so I really want to make it as best as I can pos possibly do, and this means yeah spending even even more time and and effort just to get things really right and. If I see something that I know that I could do better, well, then I don't think that I should put it out the way it is, and, but uh, essentially just, yeah, uh, uh, double down and do really uh, invest the amount that it takes just to make it as well as I could possibly make it. And this is why things are taking so long, especially now that with my work, I've been occupied a little bit and Night. yeah, everything is just just uh, takes takes a little bit longer right now but at least at least i got now everything done uh, uh in terms of preparation for the film no update so i'm really really looking forward to shooting this um random images of you sleeping everywhere and wide awake at some ungodly hour thanks matt <laughs> this uh this actually could be could could work this could work thanks i, I will keep it on my mind um will be available video from after the stream ends yes of course uh, all my videos uh, will be on my uh, film motion video page unless there's a good reason not to keep them uh, up maybe i, I just start uh, <laughs> explosively vomiting because i ate something wrong <laughs> on the other hand maybe those those will uh, gain the most clicks either way yeah the, the this video uh, of course will will stay online and what else love the pixel clock and the 
Tetrominos on the whiteboard. <laughs> yeah, uh, this was of course a present uh, from my wife before I had this this ugly white IKEA clock, and she said, "Yeah, you need something with more pixels." And of course, she was right. Okay, let's let's try and continue editing. We're almost done, folks. We're almost done. Clocks. As the clock struck midnight, the theme got announced. Good. Now this is finally something <laughs> that I have images for. As the clock struck midnight, the theme got announced. The theme got announced. Did I say thim and not theme? Oh God, maybe I have to do a re-recording there on the voiceover, which is also nothing unusual. The theme got announced. The theme got announced. Okay, let's 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 keep it for now. But you know what? Let's put down a marker there and uh, give it a name. Uh, maybe re-record VO voiceover. Because as I think I've established, uh, I'm a perfectionist and, and I can't help it. So um, there's day one again. So the theme got announced. Uh, I think I have it there on my phone. No, this is just the phone sitting there. Oh, of course. So this is great. So th those are just, uh, uh, mood shots of not a lot happening, but uh, like we say, uh, cut images or images, cutaway images in a sense that you can, yeah, always cut back to if you don't have anything else. And over the years I've, I've grown at least a little bit wiser that I should more of these, uh, uh, should I have the time and, and re recall that I really should do this. So uh, the theme got announced and I started working or didn't I? I don't know what's actually happening here. I think I was waiting there for the theme. So maybe I can use this later here, but the theme got announced. Uh, I think I have here the, on my phone. This is actually, yeah, in, in real time. So I just kept uh, <laughs> refreshing my Twitter timeline there so that I can really pull down there the theme and the theme was running out of space. So let's start here. The theme was announced. Good. And this was my a candid reaction. I don't know if you can hear it. It's, it's just breathing in <laughs> through my nostrils uh, a little too loudly. So it, I, I don't think I, I liked it too much now, did I? So let's splice here the, the voiceover so that I can move it around and shove everything there a little bit further down the line. And let's see where this fits in. So I don't need the audio here, of course, because nothing much is happening. Struck midnight, the theme got announced. The theme got announced. Yeah, I should re-record this. Uh, so maybe I will have there some kind of, of menacing audio cue, but what's the next line there in the voiceover? Running out of space. Good. That's, we can just pull in a little bit there. The theme got announced. Running out of space. You know what? Let's have the voiceover start a little bit later so that I can give my audience the chance to peek at the theme for themselves if they are squinting or running this in full screen. So I will zoom in now here that you can read it here in my viewer, hopefully. So once we can see it here. Running out of space. Good. So now let's let's keep this the, the, the clip as long as as I'm saying this line here. And the next thing is what we are interested in. What the hell am I thinking about this theme now? Of course, I hated it. Of course I did. Good. So I'm, this is all almost going automatically that I'm just uh, uh, splicing now here, uh, any, any uh, quiet bits and just editing them out so that I don't have this, this, yeah, this long, as we say, snake of a clip like here so that I, really know that each one of those is a beat or a sentence in a way. So, and of course I hated it. So um, again, let's give here my reactions. Oh yes. I think this is quite good. Of course I hated it. Okay. And I said, okay, well, it wasn't that bad, but I, didn't quite like it, but 
Yeah, let, let, let's try this out. Running out of space. Uh, muted the audio, so running out of space. Good. So uh, I'm looking <laughs> sympathetically at the camera, and then we want to hear. Of course, I hated it. Okay. Not as much as some others before it, though. I hated it not as much as others some others before it though so this okay I, I like it i want to keep it in there but the voiceover starts too early that was following of course i hated it okay not as much as some others before it though yet again it felt just too ludumdare -y. i don't know yet again it just felt too ludumdare -y. i don't know this is the voiceover if you didn't hear it so right now I'm quite happy with the first pass of this, but I think this shot is going on for too long. Of course, I hated it. Okay. Not as much as some others before it though. Yet again, it felt just too... Yet again. Uh, let's cut here out yet again. And now again, I'm going to ask myself, what, uh, how can I illustrate that it's too ludum dare -y? And right now I don't know, but here the theme is, and I hate it. Maybe, maybe here me writing writing down the theme again. Maybe this should work. But yeah, I'm here now. We can see myself there writing. But I'm I'm just pretending to write, of course. So I'm lifting my hand now in this frame here. And I need to cut before this, unless, of course, it would be obvious that I'm not actually writing. And we start here, that I'm here already having some, some characters written, running out of space. Okay, now let's try and plop this right after and see how it works. Some others before it, though. Yet again, it felt just too ludumdare -y. I don't know. As dictated by tradition. Following the announcement was vomiting out ideas into my text editor. As was dictated by uh, tradition, what followed was vomiting out ideas into my text editor is <laughs> the next sentence. So um, this is going on for a little bit too long, but I want to have the word space there finished. So I'm just uh, um, trimming the start of the clip and moving it a little bit there. And let's let's try again how it feels, the pacing. Not as much as some others before it though. Yet again, it felt just too... I don't know. Good, okay, so this is, is, is okay. We got a little bit of a tail there without voiceover. Maybe a little bit longer so that we can read the whole thing. Good, and now there we cut. And what follows is... As dictated by tradition, following the announcement was vomiting out ideas into my text editor. Um, let's have a look at the chat because there's some activity going on. Um, love the pixel clock. Uh, did ha, I did feel quite ludumdare? -y. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Yeah, it, it was it was a typical ludumdare uh, kind of theme. Uh, as I said before, I'm usually not too happy with how the themes are picked, but I mean this is tradition for Ludum Dare. It's just anyone who participates can can vote on the theme, and I think this has become some kind of self-running, self-fulfilling prophecy that, of course, those themes that sound especially Ludum Dare y in a way uh, get picked. Like usually, it's it's mostly about some kind of strange mechanics, like two button game or or something that yeah. Uh, in my, in my opinion, it's it's too much uh, focused on on actual mechanics. Or the uh, the worst uh, 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 thing that was so far that made it in the final round was don't trust the game. I think this is just horrible because if you can't trust the game, that the it, it's not fun. It's you can't make anything fun if you can't trust the game. I I, I think I know where the, the the person suggesting this was going with it, but. Uh, yeah, it's it's not fun. And as for me, uh, I, I would like uh, more open-ended themes. For example, like chicken. Chicken would be a great theme because anyone can interpret chicken differently and you would get a vast uh, variety of games. 
but usually if you have something like you are the monster you can probably predict what 50% of the games are going to be like that it's just maybe Super Mario switched where you play as a Koopa or as a Toad for example so this is <laughs> this is why I don't like uh, the themes but of course let's not keep keep going on because I will keep ranting about why I hate the themes and what themes could be much better I could do this for ages pay me f and I can do this for eight hours straight or don't pay me <laughs> just 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 keep a st steady stream of coffee uh, uh, in in my veins and I will keep going uh, yeah continuing with the chat I can't wait for the next Udumdara uh, writes to Dvari maybe I shouldn't even watch this because of the spoilers all right of course yeah this was massive spoilers so uh, I don't know how much of this will uh, will stay in the final documentary, but of course some some pictures like like this one here, some clips work already. So of course they will look nicer and will have uh, will clean up the audio and of course the image because this is very yellow and overexposed there. But this will be fixed in color grading when I'm done with anything. But yeah, of course this is massive spoilers, but at least not for the uh, film noir bit. At least not not right now. <laughs> Uh, yes, there's a difference between theme, genre, and mechanic, and uh, theme voters tend to not want to know that. <laughs> Frank writes, yeah, and uh, yeah, I think uh, you're completely right. Yeah, you've, you've put this much better into words than me now stumbling over my tongue for three minutes. It's like uh, to watch Denis Villeneuve editing the first draft of the new movies. It is better to watch it in a theater. Yeah, I think uh, I think the, the final product, it's, it's like you don't want to know how the sausage is being made because it's ugly and disgusting. <laughs> but the end product, you, you really you only care what it looks like in the end, right? <laughs> Yet again, uh, it felt just too ludumdare -y. Uh, I don't know. Good, and now we continue with... As dictated by tradition, following the announcement was... Good, as dictated by tradition. Okay, so here we have a close-up. Let's have a look at the close-up. I'm looking into the camera, by the way, so that I can make sure when I'm re-watching this that um, the focus is on the eyes, or at least not the image is not too unfocused. Because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm shooting this all by myself and I'm sometimes I'd really just have to, especially with close-ups, it's really hard to get the focus right. And yeah, I'm, I'm just, just making sure that it's not completely off. So I'm, I'm just there sitting in case I need... I don't know why, it's just for one second. Oh, I think this was just for testing out um, the focus, yes. So I have here different reactions to the theme. Trying, trying to keep it. Okay. Yeah, this is good. Okay. I like this. I, I really like this take there. So maybe we can work it in there as well. Okay. Because I like uh, this. Okay, here in the close up. Okay. okay. Much better than the one there in the wide shot. Yeah. Of course, I hated it. So this is me. <laughs> By the way, this uh, this disgusted look there is me uh, scrolling on Twitter, and this is realizing the theme. And I think we can cut from here. Of course, I hated it. Okay. <laughs> Good, and then then we can cut back. So let's plop it there on top of the other thing. So where where does it fit in, right? That it doesn't is a jarring transition. <laughs> of course, I. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can make it work there because my hand is in my face in this close up, and. Of course. There, it's just on my chin. Of course, I hated it. Okay. Not as much as some others before. So maybe, maybe we can make it differently. So I'm just here laughing. Maybe I can cut to this there a little bit earlier. So, yeah, it doesn't work because I'm having here my hand now on my chin. And in the wide shot, I don't, but yeah. Yeah, sadly, this this shot, which I kind of like, doesn't work, so it has to go. Always kill your darlings, as they say. 
So what's this shot? Oh, this was the one we just had before. What's this shot here? So this is 20 minutes past midnight. And what's happening here? Yeah, this is just me sitting there working and my wife coming in and saying that I shouldn't <laughs> obsessing over the theme again. But but this is what this is what I usually do. And there I'll have some sweets. But okay, so I I think the theme is just to so I just keep it like I have it and keep As on. dictated by tradition, following the announcement. So following the announcement, so maybe this is what's happened here. No. I just need to get back to my text editor. Maybe, 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 maybe this works. Maybe this works if I put it here. There we go. How about this? Let, 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 let's try this, that I'm, come on, why don't you let me pull it down there? Oh, of course, wrong tool selected, there we go. As dictated by tradition, following the announcement was... There we go, following the announcement was. As dictated by tradition, following the announcement was. Okay, and now I think we can try Let's, let's close now here all the other panels and other bins so that I know where I'm at there. There we go. Um, to some screen grabs, because of course I always do some screen recordings as well. Join event. Oh, I don't have here. The, maybe, maybe I can work this in somewhere in, in the beginning where I said, yeah, just to free enough time to, to uh, go to Ludum, uh, to participate in Ludum Dara. This is where I joined. Uh, oh, by the way, I even have here my 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 theme voting for Ludumar 42. If anyone is interested in those, yeah, I didn't like them quite much. <laughs> so what is this here? Is this another? Okay, so this is just counting down the seconds because maybe I thought I would need this as well. Oh, and here is uh, this is me in my on my tablet. This is. Uh, with easy eyes running. This is why it's all sepia toned because of course it's the blue light filter. And this is a screen recording from my tablet when I was uh, doing the voting. Yeah, didn't like it as much, but what did I say to running out of space? I gave running out of space a whopping zero. <laughs> okay, now we know, now we know. Okay, uh, maybe I can use this later, but what do we have here? Oh, it's the early prototype already of my game. What about this one here? It's another early prototype. Title screen. <laughs> this is some some ugly programmer art. Even for programmer art, this is ugly. Okay, so vomiting out ideas into my text editor. Apparently I don't have anything of it. Notebook, what's this there on the notebook? So this is uh, wh when I'm editing on my, on, I was programming in there on my notebook and things just wanted to update and I was procrastinating in Discord. <laughs> okay, but finally we have here the time lapses. And for, like I said, I'm having uh, three screens set up and for each screen I have a separate time lapse. And this was the time lapse here for running out of space. So this is great. This is exactly what I need. The time lapse is always my fallback solution. If I don't have anything and need to to bridge a, or at least show some kind of progression in my in my work, I always cut back to the time lapse. So this is always a real uh, a time saver or life saver in a sense. So this is vomiting out some ideas. Let's see for how long this goes. And then I'm here already in Game Maker trying to make a game. This is good. By the way, um, I in my what's also cool for your uh, if you're doing also um, uh, time lapses, it's to have some kind of always uh, visible uh, on-screen clock. This is what I put here, so I know at each step at what time uh, uh, something was taken. Uh, because sometimes uh, you, you don't quite know in what order something happened and the time lapse is, yeah, like I said, it's, it's really the backbone of the whole documentary so that I can piece together what happened when. 
I, of course, I, I always note um, now at least uh, the timestamps when I'm having some idea or some something that uh, I want to yeah note down in my notes. I always put a timestamp before so that I know when I had some kind of idea. You can even see this here in, in those ideas. So this helps me really in, in editing just just yeah like like I said, trying to piece together how everything went. So good. So let's see for how long I will need this and what's happening there in uh, the voiceover again. Uh, by the way, this is a really like uh, working like this that I don't know the voiceover by heart because then you tend to forget things because you always you're not quite sure if you had already had those lines in your documentar documentary or not. And now that I've a couple of weeks distance since I recorded uh, this, this voiceover, I don't quite know what's what each sentence is going to be. So I just yeah just uh, uh, do the monkey bars and go one clip after another and really try try to to focus on the story on what's being said and try to find the best image uh, that I can. As dictated by tradition, following the announcement was vomiting out ideas into my text editor, hoping to be lucky in the process. Good. Okay, since this is a 4K uh, uh, time lapse, I could scale it down in there or just move it around. Because sometimes I think people are interested uh, in reading, in, in hitting pause and reading what <laughs> what my stupid ideas were. So let's give them a chance there and make it just don't fill the screen there, but just make it big enough so that anyone who's interested can read along like so. Uh, yeah, it's almost centered, almost centered. Announcement was vomiting out ideas into my text editor, hoping to be lucky in the process. Plan B, making a sequel to Power MT. Yeah, <laughs> this is still my plan B, right? So what's next? There. Whoop. There were a few mildly amusing contenders, but not the one among them. That divine concept with the potential to blossom into something outstanding. So uh, I had a lot of ideas, but none of them was really good. Is is pretty much what I'm saying there. So of course you you're not too interested in looking at what's this like 20, 30 seconds of a time lapse where all that's happening is just scrolling text. So I will change now the speed of this and try to compress it down a little bit, like so, and cut, find a, a, a in between cut of me just, just looking at the screen or typing or, or something like this. Uh, so where are we? So usually at this point when I'm starting a new sentence in, in the voiceover, I want also to, to have a new picture or a new clip to show. It was vomiting out ideas into my text editor, hoping to be lucky in the process. So maybe we can already cut here. Maybe I will need the other part of the time lapse. So I just put it there a little bit further away and let's let's zoom out and see. Yeah, this is where we are at right now. Um, as you, you can also probably uh, uh, notice here is that some clips are on track number four, on video track number four, like up here. Some clips are there and some I put there. The reason for this is no particular reason. I just drop them <laughs> where they land and sometimes I need to, to, when I'm trying things out, I'm just keep stacking those clips. But usually when I'm doing this, this first rough edit, I really don't care wh where they are in my edit. But the further I get, uh, I, have, I have really some kind of, yeah, it's it's not really <laughs> being uh, orderly, but it's some kind of order at least. So that usually all the video is just down on one track unless it, there I really need to stack things up like effects or something and then have a, a, a separate uh, lane just, just for graphics or visual effects that's on top. Yeah, so just to, uh, to keep things organized. But right now I just... I just keep dropping them in so I can make some progress because it's yeah it's like with writing Re you really want to get things on the page in a sense because uh, I think who said this uh, some uh, I don't know who it was but yes essentially some some writing coach said uh, yeah I, I, I can fix a bad page but I can't fix a, a blank page and this is why you you just want to keep going even if if you know it's not going to stick or if it's bad so it's yeah in, in a sense it's a lot like 
game development. Anything is a lot like game development. It's reiterating stuff, testing, editing, condensing things down, and just having something there for you to work. Okay, so uh, what did I say? I wanted something of me, some shot of me uh, looking at the screen. So video sources, live action, day 1A. And there we go. So how about this? There is it me writing. This is good. I'm writing there on Discord. <laughs> but but yeah, but maybe maybe let's let's try this out here. That I'm just writing and plop it in there. And see how it plays. Vomiting out ideas into my text editor, hoping to be lucky in the process. There were a few mildly amusing contenders, but no you know what? Maybe maybe let's switch uh, the clips around, because the, you want to see perhaps the mildly uh, con uh, uh, amusing contenders, and let's try it like this. The announcement was vomiting out ideas into my text editor, hoping to be lucky in the process. Okay, so hoping to be lucky in the process. Perhaps we can cut this editor. So let's try it if I just cut this line of text, hoping to be lucky in the process because uh, I think this is pretty obvious. So uh, yeah, sometimes I want to take out bits of the voiceover as well. Sometimes, yeah, like, like this one here, it's a little, little bit redundant. And when you're writing this or even, even recording the voiceover, you don't really notice uh, those redundancies. And when you're editing, you, you think, yeah, I'm pretty much saying three times the same thing, just in different uh, uh, kinds of sentences. So yeah, you can really compress this down. As dictated by tradition, following the announcement was vomiting out ideas into my text editor. There were a few mildly amusing contenders, but not the one of Yeah, this, this works them. good. That's divine concept with the potential to blossom into something outstanding. So you want uh, this divine concept to blossom into something outstanding. Uh, right now it's it's a little bit shorter now here with the with the uh, uh, time lapse, but still not not enough. So maybe maybe I need to cut back there to to this running out of space thing here, just to bridge some time there. Let let's let's try this. The one among them. That's divine concept. That divine concept, and you see here now I'm using, I'm just stacking now this clip here on the other video lane so that I can just move it around while the video below is not affected. That's divine concept with the potential to blossom into something outstanding. This was too long. Potential to blossom into something outstanding. Yeah, that's, I, I'm not quite sure if this works, but I don't think that I have anything anything else here now okay this is now already oh this is already making here the concept for my first idea good why is there an wave file in there oh, of course this is this is when i first talked about how things were with were going with me and this is uh i recorded the sound separately inventory management because there it's it's the camera audio is not very very good Okay, so yeah, I don't know what to put between there again, as it's it's going to be a bit yeah. tough now here to find the right images. The potential to blossom into something outstanding. To blossom into something outstanding. Well, I don't have any potted flowers here that I could use for to blossom into something. Um, hmm. You know what? I will just do it like I did before and where I have my graphics and just put on there another standing graphic. And now I'm already starting to uh, organize things. So all those stand-ins I will put on their own lane quite uh, above of anything else so that I can really see at a glance, okay, all those, those 
purple things here in this lane is where I'm not quite happy with what I have so far. And right now it's around, it's a bit less than 50% I would say so far, which is good because usually it's a lot more. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, I just had a look at the clock and we've been, uh, I've been streaming for one and a half hour almost. So yeah, let's just keep going for another, let's say 15 minutes or so, because I think you, you, quite, uh, uh, you are quite bored by what's going on there or essentially the lack of process that I, uh, progress that I'm making here. But I think uh, you've, you've, uh, I've given you a kind of a little glimpse into my creative process, uh, how I'm, I'm doing things. And as you, like, like I said, it's, you, you don't want to know how the sausage is being made because it's, it's dirty and disgusting, but this is how it works. So I kept looking and storming my brain. I kept looking and storming my brain. How do we visualize this? I have no idea. Maybe there's something else there in those themes when I've been working. So no, there's nothing in here. There's something in here. Nope. Yeah, as you don't know what you will need for the final edit while you're shooting. And this is again the problem that I'm having here. <laughs> I, I don't know how to visualize this and all the clips that I got that are that fit in the correct time frame. that is between after the announcement and before I started uh, drawing something or, or eating some candy, because I didn't mention that I was eating candy here. So anything that happened here in the first half hour, I don't have any more pictures <laughs> that I can use. Okay, so maybe can, can we cut, can we cut the, the voice over there maybe? So I kept looking and storming my brain and researching and oh. losing myself in it again. Okay, researching and losing myself in research again. This is good. Storming my brain. <laughs> Benjamin Edward Wright storms. Yeah, maybe maybe I could put in some stock footage of thunderstorms. <laughs> uh, but this won't work, probably won't work because man, fair use is a, a, a tough subject and yeah, usually when I want to put anything in there, which I'm not 100% certain that it's in the public domain and I don't need to uh, get a license, well, I just buy a license. And even if it's just some sound effect or even if it's just some font that, that I really end up using, I, uh, I'm at a time right now where I just shell out the money and buy the license because... Uh, yeah, a lot of people have been burned by using just a couple of seconds from from some movie or some game, and bam! Now now their uh, their video is being monetized by I don't know Warner Brothers or someone else, and so this is this is why I'm not I'm not doing this. Show to blossom into something outstanding. So I kept looking and storming my brain. So something outstanding, maybe, maybe. I can uh, work in something else. I just keep looking around there on my desk because sometimes, uh, I, since I have a lot of knickknackeries <laughs> uh, scattered about on, on, on the frames of my uh, screens, as, as you uh, probably know or can see here, maybe, maybe there's something among them that, that would work as a nice, uh, yeah, as a nice nod to what I'm saying or uh, yeah, just even, even contradicts what I'm saying just blossom into something outstanding. Maybe here this little unicorn with the cookie. Is this something outstanding or let's have a look around. Um, well, I, I, I could, I could uh, uh, use uh, a, a shot of my crooked uh, uh, certificate of video game world champion. Uh, as you can see here, this, this little uh, 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 corner there of the frame, I will zoom in for you that you can see this corner here of the frame. This has been here. Oh, you can see it there also in, in the other shot here. This video game world champion certificate has been there uh, crooked uh, on, on my walls for months now because I couldn't be bothered to put in a new nail <laughs> and hang it properly because yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a running joke for me because it says video game world champion uh, because I was uh, playing this uh, Tetris on Game Boy and even uh, sent in a tape to, it was a VHS tape back then, uh, 
and since now it's it says yeah what does it say fifth place or something and my ranking has slipped substantially since 2009 so maybe maybe this would would make a, a nice contrast to something blossom something outstanding and it says video game world champion blossom into something outstanding but come to think of it on the other hand it could could come across as yeah i'm patting myself on the back because i'm such a great video game champion yeah yeah maybe 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 this could come across wrong no no let's do something else matt writes when in doubt unicorns ripple from your brain effect okay charge your brain ripple oh, of course yeah yeah the, the brain meme yeah maybe maybe it should work in some more memes after the the this is fine meme <laughs> Maybe, or maybe I could, uh, yeah, I, again, I'm just brainstorming right now. Pun intended, by the way, always intend your puns, you cowards. Um, maybe I could uh, do some kinds of uh, Monty Python style animations. You know, those, those, those crude cutouts with funny sound effects. I don't know why I came up with this, but, but yeah, this is uh, in the process of making stuff when you're having really problems and you don't know how to solve something. Just, just goofing around, sometimes this helps. with the potential to blossom into something outstanding. You know what? I have this painting of the Silver Surfer. Of uh, You probably have seen it in some of my announcements in the background. Um, let's, let's see if I can find a picture. It's the Silver Surfer from the NES game. NES Silver Surfer Game Over Screen. Man, I love the internet. Yeah, this one here. This picture here. This is instant fail. I think I've already, I've already showed it in some, I think even in pressure run or something. Um, copy image, no, co no copy image address. I just want to zoom it up uh, and scale it up for you that you can, you can see it. Yeah, I have an oil painting of this. I, I it's pretty much it's paint by numbers. I just uh, drew, drew a grid on a on a on the canvas and just yeah painted this one here and this has been my uh, uh, defeat uh, picture uh, in 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 recent in recent years <laughs> sorry i just want to sort my my thoughts there because a anytime that i failed something i just just look at the silver surfer painting and and it feels it just feels so appropriate <laughs> and maybe maybe this would works into bl to blossom into something outstanding and then we cut to the silver surfer here in utter defeat so we already know where this is going so maybe maybe we could try this so i just put on here not graphics, but let's say um, fit there. Okay, there we go. Pick up or silver surfer painting and not graphics, but it's a pick up shot. So a lot of, of those little details just get when uh, get picked up or get shot after the edit is done or after the script is written because as you've seen it, I've run out of footage that I can use and still need to bridge some time. And then I just, yeah, find what I need to do, uh, what, what shots are missing. And then I just go about, make a huge list of little shots that I need to film. And since we've rearranged now here our furniture a little in, in my little home office, uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky to, to pull this off now that, that it looks like it was taken uh, during the documentary. But, but again, it's a little challenge and I like little challenges. Okay, let's continue. Something outstanding. Yeah, this would so be fun. I kept looking and storming my brain and researching and losing myself in it again. So storming my brain and researching and losing myself in research. So let's find here. No, not fit. It's is it fit? Where is my where is my backbone of the story? Where is the time lapse? There it is. Screen three. Oh yes, of course, on screen three, researching again. Oh, now now recall, I've I've watched uh, some gameplay of, of, of an old uh, NES game, Zillion was it called, and I just, now here I'm tweeting and have the clock again and looking at my mail and tweeting again and procrastinating on Twitter. Yeah, this is really interesting on what, what's, what's happening there. 
on, on the other screens because like I said on my main screen it's just game dev game dev game dev but on the other screen it's checking Twitter reading mails watching YouTube so this is no life radio so where do we start maybe 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 we can do this like this I cut back to writing like so I just kept looking and storming my brain oh. Let's copy this shot over there. And I, I'm not too happy with how this works now that I'm just copying this shot around. So I kept looking and storming my brain. Storming my brain. Yeah, I really want I really want to show myself <laughs> storming my brain in a way. Um, does it show here? This doesn't know. This is just me getting to work. By the way, I don't know if you have noticed this. this is a little Easter egg because I have here the the, the black unicorn standing there in the door fr door frame. So yeah, this uh, if you're still watching, this apparently is an Easter egg. I think I have her now. Come to think of it, in a lot of shots, uh, this this little uh, unicorn plushy toy. <laughs> I think. Yeah, there it is again. There it is again. You know what? I think uh, I need to work in this shot because now I can after after uh, uh, the thing is done I can ask uh, everyone guess how many unicorns <laughs> are, are in the whole film so brainstorming okay so here I'm writing again maybe I can use this one here but it's it doesn't look like storming my brain it really doesn't oh man Storming my brains. Maybe, maybe it's just like me in a close-up. Maybe this this works. Any of those close-ups? No, this is again twice. Just saying okay. Ah, I shot two little close-ups again. Yeah. Okay. So storming my brain needs also is also a stand-in. <laughs> One of many. Oh, pasted it in the wrong lane. There we go. Storming my brains. So I kept looking and storming my brain. Storming my brain. Storming brain. I don't know what it's going to be. So let's just take it there with three question marks and continue. And researching and losing myself in it again. I ended up watching a little bit of Kicks gameplay a large bit of zillion okay i I've watch, was watching a little bit of kicks gameplay and a large bit of zillion which uh the uh, time lapse confirms and i think i even downloaded the videos that i watched already or put it at least somewhere in my oh this is the wrong one in my bookmark so that I can download them later when I'm editing this. So this is probably what I'm going to do or maybe record, do some screen recording of yeah, just, just the videos that I watched back then playing in my browser in YouTube. I ended up watching a little bit of Kicks gameplay and a large bit of Zillion. Good, okay. I don't know if this is important or necessary, but it, at least it gives a little bit of flavor to the whole story. Because the story, again, if, if we just take a step back, and what is the story so far? Um, the story is, yeah, it started an hour earlier, which is okay. So this just explains now why it's, it's uh, shortly before 12. Good. Next thing is I wasn't feeling too well before. But uh, yeah, the theme got announced and I wasn't feeling too bad about it but still didn't enjoy it started brainstorming and now again i'm i'm doing too much research for what's good <laughs> as always and those are the first signs of of the whole thing getting off the rails so i think this is this is good it still makes sense i hope even to you and let's end researching of course yeah and researching and researching uh, took a turn for the worse and then i was just watching <laughs> watching youtube videos okay so uh, let's uh, put this in there and then have a short peek ahead on what's in the voiceover and then i think we will call it a day for today um where is essential graphics there it is 
and researching. Researching. Um, yeah. And losing myself in it again. Researching and losing myself in it again. So maybe I need a close up of myself. By the way, uh, shooting myself or pickups of myself half a year after the effect is always funny because uh, I don't know how to get your hair like you have a certain <laughs> hairdo in mind. I just I just comb through and hope it, it sticks. And sometimes this looks okay and sometimes it's, it doesn't. So yeah, usually for me, especially for me, it's it's almost impossible not to notice the shots that were uh, of, of, of close-ups of me that were done weeks or even months after <laughs> the fact happened. So this will probably be one of them. So pick up, what did I want to write? Pick up... Um, researching yeah you, you usually don't think that you shoot enough close-ups while the thing is happening because after all you want to make a game Rain. and researching and losing myself in it again i ended up watching a little bit of kicks gameplay good kicks by the way has a great sound i still uh, this is this is the, the most important thing i remember from the game by the way it's uh, uh, pronounced like it's it's kicks but it's written q i x gameplay in youtube and zillion gameplay in youtube i think zillion is a master uh, system game f with a light gun game pony why did i want to write game pony i don't know <laughs> Uh, yeah, Zillion, is, it's quite interesting. It, it reminded me a little bit of the Impossible Mission of the Commodore 64 game, and but with some Mega Man in between. It's it's an interesting, nice mix. And a large bit of Zillion. One eye is enough. Okay, a large bit of Zillion. Until my bad conscience overwhelmed my apparent need for procrastination. How the hell should I show how my bad conscience overwhelmed my need for procrastination? Oh boy, oh, damn it. You see, there are a lot of stand-ins and problems that I haven't, haven't solved yet. But yeah, let's, let's be correct now and make this there. Um, what did I say? Bad conscience. Do you write this like this? Ban. Well, <laughs> certainly don't. Write it like this. Good, bad conscience. It's overwhelmed my apparent need for procrastination. I need for procrastination. Okay, so um, we're at the three minute mark. Hooray! And I think more than 50% or around 50% is just stand ins. Yeah, so I think it's, it's even more than 50%. But at least, yeah. I started oh, stop. But yeah, in a nutshell, <laughs> this is how it goes. It's just littering up the whole thing with uh, stand-ins and this is when when the first editing pass is done which takes me like yeah 10 to 20 hours or so um, then uh, it's just going back and filling in all those blanks and this is really what what takes the most of, uh, of, of time because some things are, are done pretty fast. Like like I said, I got a list of all the things that I need to shoot during daylight, a list of all the things that I need to shoot when it's dark uh, with uh, some uh, 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 yeah, references of how my uh, my room looked like uh, when, when the jam was happening and stuff like this, just to keep the continuity up. And some things are just like, like some funny bits are really a lot of, of, of work or some kind of motion graphics. But like I said, maybe really, maybe I'm, 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 I will do some of those uh, uh, illustrative. Do you say this is, uh, uh, I don't know if this is the right word, but, but the things that are trying to illustrate uh, stuff, which I don't have images for, I will maybe, maybe do them as Monty Python animations, perhaps. Still a lot of work, but maybe also, also very funny to watch. Unless of course I come up with something even better or even, even better, something that's game themed. Like I said, the, the RPG maker stuff for Headroom or the, the fake title screens of Metroid and Super Mario for, for the uh, Power MT documentary, something along those lines would be best but like i said it's it's a lot of work but when i think it's funny and it's working well to hell with it i go all in with 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 the work okay uh 
Thank you so much, everyone, for, for uh, sticking around and for watching me ramble while I'm putting stand-ins <laughs> over pretty much the whole thing. But yeah, I hope this was, 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 was funny, was interesting to you. And like I said, this stream, uh, if you want to watch it later, if you just came in late and want to see the whole uh, thing from the start, of course, this stream will stay up on my uh, Phil Motion video page. And I can see there is Uma Balandi <laughs> just came by and while, while I am saying bye to everyone. So thanks, Uma, for, for dropping by. And uh, yeah, like I said, thank you everyone uh, for, for yeah, sticking around, commenting, asking questions there on, on, on the chat. Like I said, this is really great. I never uh, would have thought that I would be doing streams of me editing my little stupid, silly little videos. But then again, here we are. And uh, yeah, again, thank you very much. And I hope you still got a little bit of evening or afternoon because right now it's close to 11 p.m. here and my mouth is getting dry. So I think I should should invest now in some <laughs> coffee again. Oh my God, it's not the time for coffee, but on the other hand, it's always time for coffee, right? Okay, again, to, to, to wrap things up now. Again, thank you so much for watching uh, and I'm glad that this worked out here. By the way, you can see here, this is my team viewer. This is how I'm controlling now the laptop <laughs> that is doing the streaming. So yeah, again, thank you and have a great day and hopefully see you around with another stream of me editing or maybe doing some visual effects or more Photoshop stuff or maybe even shooting uh, the, the film noir bits. This is what I'm trying to, to work out uh, how I can... Yeah, make a live stream of shooting one or two scenes. But yeah, I, I'm, I don't have anything uh, definite yet. Just just the, the, the intention to somehow get it to work. Okay, thank you again and have a great night and see you around.